Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Abdur and I'm an MSc in Applied Computing student at the University of Toronto. In today's video, we will learn how to build a resume that can pass the applicant tracking system or ATS. I'll also share some valuable tips to ensure that your resume stands out to both hiring algorithms as well as recruiters. We'll take a look at my own resume as an example and I'll also share it as a template at the end of the video. So make sure you stick around. Before we get started, let's take a moment to understand what ATS really is. ATS or Applicant Tracking System is a software used by companies to manage their hiring process. When a medium to large scale company posts a job opening, they often receive hundreds of applications. To efficiently manage this influx of resumes, they often employ an ATS software which scans through resumes for specific keywords, qualifications and relevant experiences to shortlist candidates for further review. The problem is that these ATS softwares are rudimentary and they lack the ability to read and understand information from every resume format. As a result, approximately 70% of the submitted resumes are rejected by the ATS software and they're never able to make it to the hands of a human recruiter. Personally, I hate ATS. I believe that every single resume submitted for a job opening must be given human attention. I know this is not scalable if you're a company with thousands of employees and for every job posting that you make, you receive hundreds of applications. But at least the ATS software should be made smarter so that it can read information from every single type of resume. But until that becomes a reality, we'll have to work on our resumes and make them ATS friendly. Now let's talk about how to format your resume to make it ATS friendly. Using the right format can significantly increase your chances of getting noticed. To begin with, my tool of choice is Google Docs, which is a web-based tool, so you don't have to install anything on your computer to get started. Also, Google Docs integrates very well with Grammarly browser extension, so you don't have to worry about your grammar being bad on your resume. Avoid using creative tools like Figma or Canva to build your resume, even though they might make your resume look uh, more visually appealing. This is because ATS softwares have trouble parsing information from resumes created using these softwares. So instead, stick with Google Docs. Use a clean professional layout with easy to read fonts and refrain from adding images or graphics. Also, ensure that your resume has a single column layout as dual column layouts often confuse the ATS software. Keep your resume concise and focused. Aim to keep it within two pages, highlighting the most relevant information. Once you're done creating your resume in Google Docs, you can export it to PDF, which is universally acceptable. Are you traveling to Canada anytime soon? Getting a Canadian SIM card should be one of your top priorities upon arrival. But getting a cell phone plan can be quite challenging, especially when you're new to the country and in need of a SIM card right away. However, if you are in India and watching this video, I have a great news for you. I recently discovered an incredible service called Canadian SIM which delivers a Canadian SIM card directly to your doorstep no matter where you are in India. And the best part is, it is completely free. With Canadian SIM, you'll have a SIM card with you before you even set foot in Canada. And that's not all. For a limited time, they're offering an amazing deal of 30 GB of data for just $40 a month, which is a remarkable offer. Additionally, there are no activation fees, so you only have to pay your monthly bill. Rest assured, the SIM card you receive will work seamlessly with your existing cell phone, eliminating the need to upgrade your device or commit to an expensive phone plan. Upon landing in Canada, your SIM card gets activated instantly so you can call anyone right away with uh, unlimited Canada-wide calling. Canadian SIM is powered by Fido, a leading network provider in Canada. I personally use their SIM and let me tell you, it's been flawless. I've had no complaints whatsoever. So why settle for less? Use the link in the description below to get your Canadian SIM delivered conveniently to your doorsteps today. Now let's take a look at my resume. Right away, you can see uh, it looks simple and minimal, especially when compared to my previous resume, which I had created using Figma, which is more of a design tool. I know my old resume looks more visually appealing, but the ATS software struggles to read text on it, so it's a waste, and instead I'll stick with the new one. The first and most crucial section of your resume is work experience. This is what hiring managers and recruiters are most interested in. So list your work experiences in 
reverse chronological order, putting the most recent ones on top and uh, clearly mention your job titles, company names and dates of employment. When describing your work experiences, focus on impact that you brought to the uh, company's success. Use bullet points to highlight your achievements and whenever possible, quantify your accomplishments. Avoid filling this section with technical jargons or min minute details that are better suited for an interview discussion. So keep them for interview. Don't put a lot of technical jargons on your resume right away. Instead, what recruiters want to see is how you contributed positively to your past companies. If you are a recent graduate or have limited work experience, you might not have a lot to put in this section. So instead, you can make up for it by adding more bullet points for each experience. The next section on your resume will be projects where you highlight any relevant projects that you've worked on, including personal projects. If you don't have extensive work experience, so if you're a fresher or uh, you just have like one year of experience, then project section can be a great way to showcase your skills and uh, passion. As you gain more experience, you can shorten this section and instead allocate more towards uh, work experience, which was the first section. And also remember, providing GitHub links to uh, the projects that you have done and you have mentioned on your resume does add a lot of credibility to what you've done and it, uh, and it allows potential employers to explore your work in case they want. The next section is certifications. If you have earned any relevant certification, make sure you include them in your resume because certifications can demonstrate your expertise and dedication to continuous self-learning. Also, don't forget to add verification links to uh, any certification that you mention on your resume as it allows employers to verify their authenticity. The next section is education. Here, I would say you can be selective and include what is actually relevant. For most professionals, mentioning their highest qualification is enough. You don't really have to mention about your high school details because they take up a lot of space and they don't really matter. Instead, keep this section brief and allocate the space for other more important sections on your resume. The last section on my resume is skills. This section is crucial for keyword matching with the ATA software. So list both hard and soft skills that you have acquired through work experience, projects and self-learning. Also, as a bonus, you can tailor this section to match uh, the job requirements so that you can highlight the skills that are most relevant for the position that you're applying for. Before submitting your resume, don't forget to proofread it thoroughly to make sure it is optimal for your profile. It is easy to overlook mistakes in our own creations. So consider asking a friend or a mentor to review your resume for you and provide feedback. An outside perspective can offer valuable insights and help you identify areas of improvement. If you don't have anyone to review your resume, you can always get it reviewed by me at topmate.io slash That's a wrap for today's video. I hope you found it helpful in crafting an ATS friendly resume that stands out. You can find my resume template in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.